Hi, I'm Daniel Chan from UNSW Sydney. Welcome to another adventure in pure mathematics. Today, I want to show you how the theory of modules is very useful when you want to consider not just one linear map, but several of them at the same time. To see how this works, we can look at a very old question that was due to Kronecker, uh, which looks at the following situation. Kronecker, cons Kronecker considered two linear maps, A and B, from Cn to Cm. So in other words, you can think of this as just two n by n matrices co corresponding to A and B. And his question was to classify all such pairs up to change of coordinates in both the Cn and the Cm. Well, that's a very interesting question. And unfortunately, I won't have time to give you the answer to this rather interesting question. This type of question suggests much more complicated examples. More generally, you can ask the following. So suppose you look at a whole diagram of linear maps, like the one here. So here we have four vector spaces, V1, V2, V3, and V4, and three linear maps, alpha from V1 to V2, beta from V2 to V3, and gamma to, from V2 to V4. And you can also ask, how do you classify such diagrams or study such diagrams, uh, perhaps up to isomorphism? Well, I claim that module theory is the correct way to study this situation here. And to invoke module theory, you need to introduce a ring. So what is that ring? That's what I want to tell you about now. So when you look at this picture here, it immediately suggests to you the following directed graph or quiver. What you can do is replace each of these vector spaces with a vertex. So there are four vertices and each of these linear maps with a directed edge. Let's give these edges and vertices labels. Let's label the vertices 1, 2, 3, 4 corresponding to V1, V2, V3, and V4. And the edges may be A, B, and C. A, B, and C. Now the point is that this graph gives you an algebra or a ring, and it's called the path algebra. And this path algebra is very important in the representation theory of finite dimensional algebra. Okay, so to, to find this path algebra, which we denote by CQ, I'll firstly define the vector space structure over C. So to do that, I just have to give you a basis over C. And the basis is just all the paths inside this directed graph. And we consider paths of length greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so that's easy enough. Let's just go through those paths. So firstly, paths of length 0, for example, you, go for, you can go from 1 to 1. So that's going to be E1. You can have a la, length 0 path from 2 to 2. That's going to be E2. And similarly, E3 and E4. For the paths of length 1, you just have the directed edges, A, B, and C. So we have three more basis vectors, A, B, and C. And finally, you have paths of length 2. You can go A and then B, giving you AB as a basis vector, and AC giving you another basis vector. So I've told you the vector space structure of this ring, and now I only need to tell you how to multiply two elements together. And to do that, I just need to tell you how to multiply basis elements. Well, that's easy enough. How do you multiply two paths? You just concatenate them. For example, if you multiply A times B, two length one paths, you get AB, this length two path. However, if you can't make a path, for example, B times A, you don't get a path when you concatenate these, you set it equal to zero. 
So let's look at another example. P1 is the length 0 path from 1 to 1. And we concatenate that with A going from here to here. Of course, that's just the length 1 path A. So left multiplication by E1 on A leaves you at A. And this defines a ring structure on this path algebra. So how does this ring help us study diagrams like this one here? Well, the point is the following. Diagrams such as this one here correspond precisely to write CQ modules. So how does that work? If you're given a diagram like this, what's the corresponding CQ module? Well, it's the following. You let M equal the direct sum of these four vector spaces. V1, direct sum V2, direct sum V3, direct sum V4. That gives you a vector space structure, and the only thing that you need to do now is to say what the scalar multiplication is. And the scalar multiplication is on the right, the way I've set it up. The only thing you need to do is to say, essentially, how do the uh, paths of length 1 act, A, B, and C. And they essentially act by these linear maps, alpha, beta, and gamma. Let me explain this a little bit more. So for example, A, what does that do? Essentially, A corresponds to alpha from V1 to V2. So it sends V1 to V2 via alpha. And the other summons it sends to 0. In other words, if you right, multiplicate, right multiply V1, V2, V3, V4 by A, you'll get this vector here. 0, you can apply alpha to V1. And that lives in V2 here to get alpha of V1. And then you get 0 and 0 here. If you want to multiply by AB, then you multiply by A first using alpha, and then B using beta. If you want to multiply by the other basis elements of length 0, such as E1, you just project onto the corresponding factor. So E1 just means that you send all of these V2, V3, V4 to 0, and you send V1. So what we see here is that the study of these diagrams of linear maps, they correspond precisely to studying modules over a certain path algebra. I hope you enjoyed this adventure in pure mathematics. To see more, you can visit my website.